Hello everyone, welcome back to my lab. Today we're going to be working on jumper wires. So for today's video, we're going to be correcting a connection on this capacitor going to here that should have gone here. So we're going to need to cut this wire somewhere around here, and we're going to need to reconnect that to this area without damaging any of the existing connections. So we'll start by breaking the incorrect connection at a convenient location. All right, we have plenty of wire to solder to. Now we need to remove the solder mask from the area we're connecting to. We're going to do that with the scraper right around, let's say, here. Should be enough space to work with. here. So now that we have the connection prepared, the next step is to get our new jumper wire prepared. So I'm going to cut a little piece of copper foil, a little bit larger than we need. That should be about right. Okay, so now that we have the wire cut to size, we're going to want to flatten it out a little bit. It looks like it got a bit bent while we were cutting it. So we're just going to flatten it out. And we're going to work from, let's, let's do the left side first. We're going to line it up about where it needs to go and then tack it down with some capped on tape. Right. And we're going to bend this in to where it needs to go. pressure on the tape to hold it down so it doesn't move anywhere while we're soldering it. That should do the trick nicely. Stand a little bit closer. Focus. And get things ready with some flux. And we should be ready to go. Extra solder off and a touch more flux on the top there. And just a little bit of gentle downward pressure, and that was perfect. So now that we have the first end soldered, I'm just going to zoom 
out a little bit so you can see what's going on here. And now we can take our cake off and plan the final route. The combination of the scalpel blade and the tweezer tip usually works well for this. Put a little bit of a bend in there and then cut off any extra right about there. Yeah, that looks about the right size, the right spot. We'll take that down again. Another little tape dot. And perfect where we wanted it. Some flops. And we'll get this one down. Alright, looks like we need a little more flux on there. And the wire is moving. When that happens, it just means you didn't press down enough on the tape. So let's give it a little more pressure there, hold it down, and we can clean up that side of joint just a little bit. I'm actually going to back off and move the tape. So the problem with taping too close to the end is that sometimes you can't get the wire to stay put while you're soldering it. So if you go like this, then you can usually get a tweezer or something onto the wire and keep it from moving. And now we have a much nicer joint. Still just a touch more solder than we need, but we can spread that out a little bit. And it looks pretty good. So now that we have the jumper in place, we can go clean up some of the flux before we worry about the solder mask. So now that we've finished the soldering of our jumper wire, now we're going to touch up the solder mask. For this, we're going to use liquid epoxy, in this particular case, a Von 2104, which is a fairly thick resin that should work nicely. This is the first time I've used it for solder mask touch up. Some of the other stuff I've used is a little bit thinner and I've had less good experiences. So we just squeeze the compartments, and we squeeze the packet, mix the resin and the hardener. 
go back and forth a bunch of times. Make sure it's nice and thoroughly mixed. This is probably this is probably enough considering we're gonna be adding color to it as well, and that'll mix it more thoroughly. As much as we can away from there so I don't get a pocket in the scissors. Makes it easier to clean. going to add a little bit of blue dye to make it match our solder mask. We'll see how close I can get the color. Yeah, we're going to need more than that, I think. Still probably could have gone a little bit darker, but don't want to spend too much time mixing. And I'm just going to use a little wooden toothpick to pick up the epoxy and kind of smear it around the trace. See how well we can paint it on. That's probably... Okay, we definitely should have put more dye in. So the goal here is twofold. We want to both hold the trace down and we want to insulate it against contact with any of the nearby components. That looks like pretty good coverage. I'm just going to go clear off some of the excess. Don't need quite so much there. I'm just going to use the back of the blade to wipe it off. And then a swab of some alcohol to get rid of the excess. So at this point, we could just wait 24 hours and have it be done, but we're going to thermal cure because I don't feel like sitting around and waiting for that long. And a little while later, the board is out of the oven and let's see how it looks. Yep, epoxy feels nice and hard. No soft spots, not sticky. So this one is done. I definitely could have done a little bit better with the painting it on. I'm still experimenting with techniques to see what works best for that. But it's entirely serviceable and uh, is both insulated and mechanically sound. So now we're going to do a Second repair using a surface wire. This is something you do if you needed a heavier gauge conductor or just to run a longer distance. Let's say we're gonna go from this little diagonal wire here up to that one up there. Let's zoom out a little more so the camera can see it. So we're gonna go from here up to here. And yes, you could do that with a bare wire, but it would be a lot of epoxying and uh, isn't always the most efficient option. So for this, we're going to use a 30 gauge insulated copper wire. Make sure we get 
is the length about right. So we're going to go from there down to there, down to there, so we want to cut it about there. This is still borderline for when I would actually use the surface wire, but I wanted to keep the entire rework within the field of view of the microscope, so I can't make it too big. Alright, that should do the trick nicely. More fit check. Okay, so we're gonna go from up there, and then we'll worry about bending it in a bit. So let's go clear the solder mask off of where we're attaching it. So now we place our jumper in position and get some tape dots to hold it before we do anything else. I'm actually going to shorten this wire a little bit. That end is not quite perfect, but we'll worry about that once it's secured. So the next step, now that we have it approximately where we want, is to secure it with a ultraviolet-based adhesive. In this case, we're using Dymax 904, which is a ultraviolet-cured polyurethane. So we're just going to put a little dab of the adhesive on either side of the tape, and then a little bit more over there. With UV glue, you do need to secure over the top of the wire. You can't just go under it because the UV can't reach under the wire. This is a dual cure adhesive, it will thermal cure as well, but oven cycles take time and UV is a lot faster, so that's what we're going to use here. You can actually use this to insulate over surface wires as well, I just wanted to show both techniques today. Alright, so it looks like we've got enough glue on here. So, next step is to put it in the curing chamber. Put on my shiny UV blocking safety glasses. Take the board out of the holder. Stick it in the UV box and let's do a minute to start.
Okay, so now we're going to remove the tape since that's no longer serving any purpose. We'll why have the wires glued down. And this end is all ready to go and solder. This end is going to need a little bit more work. The size is not perfect. It is very difficult to estimate the crack length for a wire like this. But it's easy to fix, so as long as we're close, that's fine. I'm going to make a little cut in the insulation here. Looks like we may not have had the wire in the UV long enough. It's secured vertically, but it's sliding just a little bit. So we'll put it back in the lamp for one more curing cycle after we're done. It looks stable enough for the time being, so we're not going to worry about that too much. Just means I got a whole wire with tweezers while I do the second strip cycle. Finding the optimal cure time is a little bit of an art. They give you recommendations in the data sheets, but that depends on a lot of things like glue thickness, which is pretty difficult to control accurately when you're putting it on by hand. So I usually try and start with two minutes and then do one more cycle if I need more. All right, that looks like it should be about right. So let's cut off the excess wire. wire bending tool for this. And we're going to want to pull a bit more of the solder mask back. Just about perfect. That tip should still be okay for this. So let's get some flux over our ending solder joint. down and now we'll move up to the other end that length turned out to be just about perfect actually we've got some overlap and some bare copper just a little bit of flux here as well Notice the wire sprung up a little bit. Not having three hands, it's a little bit difficult to hold the wire and the solder and uh, the iron at the same time. So usually I just have to pin the wire first and then apply pressure to make the joint a little bit later. And it looks like we need some more flux on top of the wire there. That's looking quite perfect. There you go, it's a much nicer looking joint now. And now we just clean up flux from the joints. Deflux oh, out. That end is secured all the way.
So it's fun trying to do this for the camera, trying not to hold things at angles that'll block the screen and so on. It makes things a little bit difficult. Um, let's try doing this. That's interesting. There we go. Apparently the wire didn't pin properly the first time around. Deflux around there. So now that we're done, I'm just going to get some glue over the ends, secure it a little bit more permanently, protect those joints from damage. Put it around there. And one more tack in the middle just for good measure. into the curing lamp for, let's do three minutes this time. And here we have our finished free work. We have a insulated wire using UV adhesive for attachment, and then a bare wire insulated and secured with two-part epoxy. Thank you for watching, and we will see you later.